Sports. Baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors, and we are in the beautiful Pacific Northwest as the Royals begin a nine-game road trip and a three-game series with the Seattle Mariners. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Lefevre. Joel Goldberg is coming up, and the Royals will have their hands full tonight as they face Felix Hernandez, but this is a good time. Hud, because the Royals really swung the bats well during the homestand. And it's good. They're going to need to tune up because this guy here is one of the best. Only a 202 average he's given up against the rest of the league. However, this is not the first great pitcher the Royals have busted. They'll have to do that tonight to get back in that win column. Let's look back on some of those impressive numbers. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. It was a strong week for the bats. The Royals had that stretch of games where they lost 9 of 11. Offense was the problem, and they bounce back nicely against the Brewers and the Red Sox. We know how important starting pitching and defense and bullpen is for sure, but look at that offense. you got to score the runs. 5.7 runs per game. That's getting it done. If they can at least score over four, they'll be in good shape. Two starts ago, believe it or not, Felix Hernandez gave up eight runs in a third of an inning. This guy's got four or five good pitchers. <laughs> but you know what, though? That happens, Ryan. This is the world's greatest league right here. You're going to give it up every so often, but, but he'll be tough. Get him early and often, and you might get him out of there. The Mariners have struggled this year, and especially on offense, but Joe Blanton, who starts tonight, will not take them lightly because they have some big bats and some big names in their lineup. Joel Goldberg will show us perhaps the next wave of Mariner stars coming up.
parents. And then the last one was Felix's kid. Look at that windup. Jeremy Hernandez looking like his dad. We'll bring you the Expo version here. That could be a future Cy Young Award winner. The good news is the Royals won't have to see him for a lot of years. The bad news, perhaps, they see his pops here tonight. Joel Goldberg back at Safeco Field. That might not be all bad. The Royals are 4-4 four and four against him, although they've never scored more than three runs in a game against Felix Hernandez. Last faced him in 2013, and they beat him. When Felix pitches, it is an event here at Safeco Field. They have a whole section called the King's Court. The sign just said, all rise. They did that as Felix walked in. The Royals, they won't be intimidated. They know what's coming. He's a guy that doesn't walk many people when he's around the strike zone. So as a hitter, it's somewhat comforting knowing you're going to go up there. And, you know, it's a guy that's not going to walk you. He's going to throw balls in the zone. You just don't know what pitch is coming. And he's a guy that doesn't fall into many patterns. But at the same time, you're going to be ready to swing. The Mariners, six times they have lost. And the next game when Felix pitched, they won all of them. The Royals will try to break that trend. First pitch from Seattle is coming up next. Universe revolves around you. Call 1 800 PICK ATT. By your local Kansas City Chevy dealers. Come visit for great prices on all the new 2015 Chevy vehicles. And by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. The roof is wide open, and we expect it to be that way for all three days. Royals come to town with a three and a half game lead. They will play three teams from the West. Three games here, three games against Oakland, and then we'll get a first hand look at the surprising Houston Astros. And we just told you how the Royals' offense spiked during the homestand against the Brewers and the Red Sox. And here's how they're lined up tonight, presented by State Farm as Mike Moustakis and Salvador Perez had the day off yesterday. Ned Yo said that. Lorenzo Kane was due a game off, so he is not in the starting lineup. Gerard Dyson will be in center field. And here he is, Felix Hernandez, already 10 and 3, the first American leaguer to 10 wins. And 3.08 almost seems kind of high for him. 
There's an ERA. And he always brings the king in his court. And there they are. There's his court. He's uh, one of their most exciting players. Zunino, he's a, a power hitting catcher. Does a nice job, though, catching, throwing, and beating runners. 29%. It's pretty good. Anything 30 or better is really good. So he's not doing too shabby. King Felix has some good stuff. Opponent's only hitting 202 off of him in the league. That's fourth best. Good hard fastball. He'll go uh, 91 to 94. Good slider curve, changeup. His changeup probably is his equalizer. That's his best pitch. And the movement on that pitch, man, that thing looked like even Escobar is shaking his head. How did that turn out to be a strike? That's his two seam fastball. It's wicked. Eski had a very good home stand. He drove in six and flies out to Austin Jackson to begin the road trip. The Royals have fared well against Felix Hernandez. His record is four and four all time against Casey. And actually, in his 11 starts, the Royals have a winning record against Seattle. Mariners are five and six when Felix Hernandez starts against Casey. And now Mike Moustakis, after getting yesterday off against the Boston Red Sox, he drove in five during the homestand. One for six against Felix in his career. Felix has a nice fluid delivery, but he really gets a lot on his hip turn. When he turns to start coming home. He does a great job of hiding that ball. And, and to have the weapons that he has makes it even more difficult when you can't see it coming out of his hand. Watch his turn. Watch his hips. He really turns those hips. Big curveball. Still just 29 years old. Coming off a very good start. A win on Wednesday against San Francisco. Eight shutout innings. It's already the third time this year that he's gone at least eight innings, not allowing a run. Two down in the top of the first inning. But the start before that, it seems almost impossible. But, I mean, you, you wonder, was Felix Hernandez throwing left-handed against the Astros? Can you even imagine him giving up eight runs in a third of an inning? Nope. But it happens. And this is baseball. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you feel like you're executing, but you're not. You're leaving pitches out over the middle. And we've seen good pitchers lose their fastball command. And that's what it was. Try to get to him early like anybody else. Kendry's Morales was here all of 2013 and then finished last season with the Mariners after beginning the year with Minnesota. One and one. I mentioned last time out Hernandez went eight innings and no earned runs third time this year 29th time in his career he's gone at least eight innings without allowing a run very very all two strikes yeah very very impressive this guys this is his 318th career start just him and Jamie Moyer have the most starts in their history over 300. Up his first strikeout with a fastball at 92. 88 strikeouts for Hernandez and his court.
be on top of the division not in fourth place. Last year the Mariners finished with 87 wins. It was a 16 game improvement over the previous year but below 500 as they enter tonight and the Mariners gosh it's been a long time HUD. I want to say it's been five or six years that they just cannot get their offense going in Seattle with some pretty big names in the lineup. I can't believe Richie Sexton the Sexton how, how you say his name Sexton Sexton had a hard time the power he had the pop he had all fields I couldn't believe it. Oh, look at that first pitch. Logan Morrison the Kansas City kid and nearly a collision Rios and Dyson. Oh well at least the ball was caught. So Dyson out there in center field as we take a look at the Royals defensively tonight presented by Ford. Logan Morrison he tried to ambush Joe Blanton first pitch of the game and almost got him. And you know Dyson hasn't started too many games in center field and Rios uh, their communication there they're going to have to. Just figure that out. Rusty Coons. He'll help him figure it out. Good breaking ball for a strike. 0 and 2 from Blanton to Austin Jackson. Still doesn't look right seeing him in any uniform but a Tiger uniform. Seattle Mariners are last in the league in team batting average. They are second from the bottom in runs scored. And that's with guys like Morrison, Jackson, Cano, Cruz, Seeger, Trumbo. I mean, those are big bats. Sure are. It's hard to explain. I mean, the game is hard. Obviously, trying to square the round ball up with the round bat, you know, there's there's issues there, and it becomes mental. So you got to stay strong and positive, but you got to keep working through it. And they're hoping that their new hitting coach. Great former great player Edgar Martinez can help him there. Two up two down against Blanton physically and mechanically. These hitters are all they're here they're, they've been doing it for years but now it becomes mental. He puts us in the driver's seat and that's where Joe Blanton was on Wednesday against Milwaukee. His first major league win in almost two years. Holding the Brewers to just one run in five innings, no walks. Really pitched well to all parts of the plate. And now Robinson Cano, here we are. Well past the one third mark of the season, and Robinson Cano has two home runs and 22 driven in. Using a lot of the opposite field. Really just hasn't caught in fire, especially with that long bond. We just oh, have to talk about that. Well, there's number three. Tell by the sound. Makes him three for 11 off of Blanton in his career, and that ball was hit a ton, and it was loud. Blanton going to try that sinking fastball, but it didn't sink. Matter of fact, at, at that elevation at 91, it sunk over the outfield fence, and he'll need to keep that ball down. That guy Felix if he's on he won't need a lot of run support. That's a good pitch there and didn't give it Blanton wanted that one. Nelson Cruz he led the major leagues last year with 40 home runs for Baltimore. And he was on his way again. This year off to a 
Great start in the first two months of the season. He has 19. 16 more home runs than Robinson Cano. Well, this guy hasn't changed who he is, and he hasn't let any distractions around him, contract, change of teams, any of that stuff. He's just a hitter. He's a he's a masher. Has the same approach. Has that wide open front step there, and he looks for anything that's a mistake. A great mistake hitter. And you got his kind of power. 331 down the left field line and 376. Can't contain him. Good pitch in on his hands. And Hosmer makes the play. Blanton gives up just his second home run in 21 innings. And Seattle leads 1 0. Don't forget to vote Royals Royals.com slash vote. The voting ends on July 2nd. If you haven't already you can vote up to 35 times. And Mondays we get updates on the all star voting. And we've had some significant changes. Most notably Miguel Cabrera is now the starter at first base. And Josh Donaldson is creeping up on. Mike Moustakis at third base, Nelson Cruz, and they were just advertising here in Seattle to vote for him because he's starting to creep up at the DH spot behind Kendry's Morales. So Miguel Cabrera with a 1.3 million edge, as some other cities have responded to what Royals fans have done. Osmer out in a fly ball to Seth Smith. One down in the second inning. Salvador Perez has 10 million All Star votes. That is wonderful. And a little salute there to Felix Hernandez as he steps in the box. He's our most trusted player, brought to you by the most trusted brand, Honda. And apparently he likes to hit against the Seattle Mariners. Sure looks like it by the numbers. He's got power short to the ball. King Felix be a test for him like all are. And Salvi likes that ball middle in and down. Three for nine against the King. Hello, how you doing, sir? Give me a cookie, please. But that two seam fastball, it's got a lot of movement. Just a couple of Venezuelans hooking up right here, but a couple of guys from 
Valencia, Venezuela. It's a little nod to the hometown. It's a it's a saying that comes up quite a bit in baseball about you know sometimes you just need to tip your cap, which never happens. And it usually is a figure of speech after something happens, but Salvi a little tip of the helmet before the first pitch. Yeah, that's his homie. The bragging rights are, are on the line here. But not sympathy cards. No, no, no. None of those, but, but bragging rights. And those are big. Especially with fellow countrymen. Seamer had some wicked sink to it, and he looked at home plate umpire Marvin Hudson and said, Was that a strike? Oof. Zanino could barely even hold on to it. The fastball looked like it had some cutting action to it. So the pitch before darting in on Perez and in the next one about the same speed darting away from him. We'll have to get. A first hit and then see if they can feed off. Off of that. Ooh. Okay. Fair right on the line. And all the way down into the corner. Salvi, that was some solid contact. Good hitting count. He gave him that cookie that he was looking for. Right down the middle. Fully extended. Pulled it. If he hits that ball in the air, it's going to hook foul. So it's good it stayed down. And the Royals chance coming out. And the fans here, they don't like it. One to Alex Gordon. This was the one pitch that did not move. Hit the straight one. Alex four for twenty in his career, and he's hitting 283 with a runner in scoring position. That'll be big number against King Felix. Get those guys out there, man. You've got to find a way to get them in. Alex had five hits during the homestand. He was also walked five times. And hit by a pitch. So Alex Gordon was on 11 times during the homestand. Plays off a slow curve ball. Two balls, one strike. Four fifty five on base percentage or batting average, but much higher with his on base percentage. Gonna stay with the curveball. And Hernandez evens the count at two and two. And now the King's Court is jumping up and down, hanging their K signs in the air. Alex hits it out into left center field, slicing and run down by Seth Smith. Yeah, the spin on that ball was taking it right to Seth Smith, so he didn't have to go as far as he initially thought he was. The ball was hit pretty well. Two seamer just really took off and, and was way out of the zone, so he hit it off the end of his bat. Could didn't quite barrel it, but nice play by Smith. Yeah, that ball's gonna move back to him. Rios, 158 hitter with a runner in scoring position. Faced him a lot. Rios has got the most experience of uh, any of the Royals hitters. 41 ABs. He's got a homer off. Him. 
That kind of movement that Felix gets on his pitches. It's going to be a. It's going to be a strikeout guy for sure. Yeah. Up the middle and into center field. Jackson will come up throwing. And with that throw, Rios goes into second base. Salvador Perez doubles. Rios singles. And the Royals have tied the game. Nice job. Looking for something out over the plate by Rios and just hit the top half of the ball. That ball's going to bounce through the infield. Salvi, good jump. Playing Rios to pull was the shortstop, Brad Miller. Leaving that hole right there. Perfect. And Salvi with a good jump on contact. He's able to score with no problem. And you mentioned it. You air mail the, the cutoff, man. That heads up runner is going to get into scoring position. Now looking to take the lead. And now Infante. That'll drive in Rios. So Omar Infante and Alex Rios, who had long slumps, continue to produce now for the Royals over the past week. And it's 2 1 KC in the second. Just what we talked about when Salvador Perez got in there. Someone's going to have to get the hit, and then they start coming. 91, he was waiting for it. Short and compact, just like we talked about it on the pregame show. Short to the ball, eliminates a lot of mistakes. Very productive. Got him early. Dyson hits it sharply to Cano. He'll flip over to Miller, and that's the inning. He sure made that look easy, didn't he? Oh. <laughs> so he forgot Is the it outs. that easy? <laughs> Shows us the Royals defensively, and this is a tough team to be a bench player because Ned Yost has a lot of everyday guys, and Gerard Dyson's no fault of his own, but his role from last year and the year before has really diminished this year. Yep. No Nori, Aoki, and that was uh, an opportunity for him to get in games late when the Royals had the lead. And it made him feel better. I mean, he's, he's in almost every game. The Royals won their share. So Gosh, now, I mean, it seemed like, it didn't seem like at least once a series, maybe twice a series, Dyson would come in as a pinch runner or you just have some appearance. Exactly right. Ned hasn't used that this year. He's staying with his guys, and, he's be, and Dyson's become a typical bench player in the American League, which leads you to play once a week. It's tough. So Ned was explaining yesterday that yeah 
Mustakas could use a day off. Salvador Perez could use a day off tonight. Kane could use a night off, but just as much he needs to get those other guys in the game. Seeger fouls it off of his foot. Yeah, minimum once a week a start should be good because they got to keep their timing in if they're going to be productive. Salvi got his rest. Butera got his start. Cologne got a start the other day off a of lefty, so he's getting his guys in there. That hurt. Ooh, Ouch, man. man that, that, that was knee. Oh, I thought it was his foot. No wonder he looked like he was in so much pain. That's nasty to hit there. Foul that ball off your knee. Mm. Two and two on Seeger, who had a career year last year and got a big contract during the offseason. And he's still not quite ready. And Blanton throws him a changeup and Seeger will run it out. That might help get some of the sting out of his knee. And Blanton strikes out his second. Okay, Blanton now he takes the toes the slab in this inning. He's got the lead now. He can go out and, and, and pitch when he's ready. Keep the stuff down. Use the defense. He knows the routine. 90, 88 to 93 with his fastball. Good changeup slider. His changeup's really an, an effective pitch that he'll use. Occasional curves. Knows how to pitch. 250th career start for him. So we got a couple of guys that are veterans in, as far as starting pitching goes. In today's matchup. This is Mark Trumbo. Coming over in a trade with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Some Mariners were trying to inject some more life into their offense. They've really had a a bad time the last two years at the DH spot ever since Kendrys Morales left after a good 2013 season. I did mention that Morales rejoined the Mariners late last year, but very little production out of that spot. Well, they're hoping that they can pick it up. Trumbo, he does strike out a lot. Left field, deep, but playable two down but he can hit him a mile that one was off the end of his bat see how that ball's down it's got a little bit of the plate but at least it was down that's why he didn't leave the park Two down to Seth Smith. This is a pitcher's ballpark. And before last year, they brought the fences in, in left field, and specifically in left center field. 17 feet in one spot. I mean, usually when they bring the fences in, you're talking about five feet, seven feet, 10 feet. But in that area right there, they brought it in 17 feet to try and help the home offense. Ball doesn't normally carry out of here. And so even with the fences in, Trumbo hits it to the warning track in left field. Great place to pitch. Not a great place to hit, although I remember, you remember, you're broadcasting for the Angels. You were here more than I was, but there was an era here when they first opened up this ballpark where it didn't seem to be a graveyard for hitters. The ball was flying out of here. Yeah, especially to right and right, or right center. That's a launching pad, 326 down that line. So left handed hitters, they like it here. Been a few a few new modern parks were built with fences so so far that they had to bring them in. Now that's a chance. And Rios just has enough room. Boy, Joe Blanton's living right tonight. Morrison is flied out to deep right, Trumbo to deep left, and now Smith to deep right. Two one KC.
Vargas as he tries to get back from a second left flexor strain on the year. He is symptom free at this point. Been playing catch. Trainer Nick Kenny telling me doing well. The next step is to throw a bullpen early this week. And so progressing as he did the first time. And again, those guys all think that maybe this injury crept back up again from some of the swings that he was taking leading up to hitting. Was pitching well and actually was pitching through some of that in that game and then went out to throw his side session, his bullpen a couple of days later. They shut it down after a handful of pitches, just wanting to make sure that he is okay. Not a serious injury, and that's what they said the last time, and that ended up playing out. But I think, Ryan and Hud, it's interesting because Jason Vargas, a phenomenal college hitter, maybe ends up tweaking that a little bit, doing some practice, and then it was Chris Young who said, you know what, I might just end up hurting myself and not do myself a whole lot of good, and he ends up being the one with the two hits. That's right, and three RBIs. One and two on Alcides Escobar. Doing pretty well when you're a team built on pitching and defense. Three starters are on the disabled list, and the Royals are still 12 games above 500. I'll say. First time through, the Royals with two runs, three hits against Felix Hernandez. And then it gets a whole lot better second time through. Yeah. It had 20 points to the batting average. <laughs> But what they did in that last inning was what the Royals do. They fed off a of Salvi's double. How about that? Well, you know, I was going to bring up the same point. I mean, they're starting to play Royals baseball again. We don't see the guys over swinging like they were. And that series in New York, I thought, started it. Two balls, two strikes. Salvador Perez got a pitch to hit. He doubled. Alex Rios with two strikes just put the ball. In play, hit the ball hard on the ground. Omar Infante got a pitch up, didn't try and hit it out of the ballpark, just hit a line drive. It's hot. He, he, he fed off of one of them. And there you go. Two strikes, put the ball on the ground, and Escobar's on with a leadoff single. Top spin. Stay on top of the ball. See where it is. It's elevated. The Royals are getting King Felix to get the ball up, and they're not missing it. And they're trying to stay within themselves. Top spin rollers, they get through a lot quicker. Now the Mariners have a mascot here that's a moose. And I saw the moose today in the, in the tunnel. Oh, and I said, moose, you're not the only moose in the house here. Off the top of the wall and not played well by Cruz. That's good for another run. And Mike Moustakis has driven in a run for a seventh consecutive game. And the Royals lead 3 1 in the third inning. Yeah, I think the mascot knows that Moose is loose here in Seattle, and it's not him, it's this guy. Moustakis hits a liner, I mean, a, a dart. It put a dent in the wall out there. Can't believe it didn't go out of a little more elevation. Watch the dent he puts in it. Look at that. You see it's a dent in the wall. Ball one to Kendry's Morales. And a, really a great read by Escobar. He could tell how hard it was hit. And he, he just kept going. He knew that Cruz was, was not going to make the play. By the way, in connection to Cruz's misplay of that carom, I will point out that Seattle is 24th in the major leagues in defensive run save. The Royals are first. They're plus 38. Seattle is minus 18. Two and one on Morales. Hernandez struck him out in the first inning. Hit speed at 98.3. That's enough to put a dent in the wall. I still see it, by the way. He didn't put a hole in it, but he certainly did that padding. 
ball was tattered. Morales with a really good 357 with runners in scoring position average. Being selective, waiting for his pitch. And this one wasn't it. There it is. Nice take. Well, it looked like it was going to be a tough night for the Royals after the first inning, and now the Royals with two runs, three hits in the second inning, and now the first three have reached in the third. Okay, by the sound and by the, the trajectory of the baseball, Escobar knew he wasn't going to catch it. And that ball, you saw what it did. It just it almost carried out of here. Two on, nobody out to Eric Hosmer. The reason, Ryan, that I stress the, that about Escobar, most guys they're gonna they're gonna freeze around second base wondering if he catches it, and then they only get to third and they don't score on that. Which would have been fine. There's nobody out, you got second and third. But Escobar with a great read scored the run on that hit. And then you remember who you're facing. I mean, if anybody has the ability to get out of second and third, nobody out, it's Felix Hernandez. So Absolutely. every 90 feet means something. Believe that. Keep it up. Nobody out. One ball, two strikes. Boss is telling himself right now, gosh, that was the one. That was a straight one. He missed it. That was right in his wheelhouse. Down. He likes it down there. Hernandez has struck out one so far. The Kings Court. They're expecting a strikeout, but the last time they did that, Escobar hit a base hit up the middle. Keep the court quiet down there, and you'll beat King. The King Felix. Hosmer 297 with runners in scoring position. And the count from one and two to three and two. The King's Court is very similar to Gordo Nation. It's a ticket package where you get a seat, you get a t-shirt, they give you that K card. And in the spirit of the King's Court, they will bring out a turkey leg at some point during the game and they will give it to the most Worthy servant. <laughs> yeah. Osmer lost the grip on that swing and asked if that was a strike. So the court gets to celebrate that strikeout. That's two for Hernandez and one away in the third. Well, and the reason that his hand came off of the bat is because the wicked movement on the two seamer fooled him and it was out of the zone. Fifty pitches already. That is great. If you're a Royals. Royals hitter. Get him out of the game. Get into that pin with a pin. Wow, the Mariners pin's been struggling this year. Salvador with one out in the second inning, doubled up the left field line, and then with two down, Alex Rios got him home. And we showed you right before he hit that double that Salvador's really thrived in his career against the Mariners. Going to. Fresh after a day off yesterday against Boston. And a good time for a day off. It's always a good time for a day off for Sal every now and then, but he was just two for 15 during the homestand. Ooh, man, did he have a good swing at that pitch? And I don't think that's where Hernandez wanted it. Still 0-2. Trying to figure out what's what is that on Salvi's bat? It doesn't look like pine tar. It's brown. Pine tar is black. He's kind of wondering what what that bat's. It's got a little different look to it tonight. One and two. But they're making him. 
expend some pitches. Expend them. See that? Does that look like pine tar to you? Well, I'd imagine it's some form of pine tar. It's gotta be some kind. Pine tar with a lot of rosin on it. Mixture. There you go. Yes. And now Morales lost track of the outs. So they throw down to first and double him off. Morales saw the ball in the dirt and he took off for second. Online with rapid pickup at delivery.panerabread.com. By Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Chrysler, come discover great deals during the Chrysler Drive and Discover event. And if you wonder why we go on and on over the years about Seattle and the Pacific Northwest, enter Exhibit A. What a gorgeous part of the country and a Beautiful night here. Look at that. Spectacular. The weather just just under 80. It's supposed to be that way for the next few days, and then this weekend they're supposed to get some summer in here. 90 degree temperatures, so we're going to miss that. But it's perfect baseball weather. Three pitch strikeout for Blanton. If Perez can connect with Hosmer, and that's the third strikeout for Joe Blanton against the first eight hitters. Enjoy America's pastime with family and friends at Kauffman Stadium and on the 4th of July the Minnesota Twins will be in town. If you're at Kauffman Stadium the first 10,000 fans receive this Royals trucker style baseball cap presented by the Kansas City State Company. And then of course after the game a great 4th of July fireworks spectacular. Royals.com 1-800-6 Royals for tickets. Mike Zanino is hitting 158. That is the worst batting average among all major league hitters with as many plate appearances as he has. Better Zanino than our guy Moustakas because Moose was battling that virus last year. Tough. Here comes some let's go Royals chance again. <laughs> A lot of fans here. Two and two on Zanino. Blanton with three strikeouts already. He had four in his last outing when he went just five innings. Got good stuff.
problems that the Mariners offense had early on is they weren't coming through in the clutch. They weren't getting big hits. So they started pressing. They started pressuring themselves. They got nervous. They overgripped the bat. That's the reason why they've got that guy in here and they fired Howard Johnson. Actually didn't fire him. They just sent him to the AAA just to keep him in the organization. And Edgar's going to try his hand. First time ever. 2 11. Another strikeout. That's four. 2 11 is what they're hitting with runners in scoring position this year. So for a team that was supposed to have offense and, and it's not coming, a lot of it is that locking up mentally, thinking about mm -hmm. something, not looking for the pitch out over the middle. That ball's right down the middle at 91. And that's usually why hitters struggling, right? I mean, it's it's what's going on between the ears, overthinking. I mean, that that's the best pitch he's probably going to see all night. Yes, absolutely. That's right down the middle. So what Edgar's been doing in just his third day on the job is he has the hitters come stand by him and he has them watch. You learn more when you're watching the game and how the pitchers facing and how he's throwing against your own guys. That's how you learn. You don't learn by going up in the tunnel and watching your swing and your last at bat. You're watching the sequence of pitches that that guy's trying to get your teammates out with. So Edgar's trying to start from scratch. <laughs> Eric Hosmer caught that ball on the way down. Blanton has retired the last seven, and at Safeco Field, the Royals lead 3-1. Cleveland Trevor Bauer three innings nine hits seven runs including this homer off the bat of the ONSS but it's also worth mentioning that Miguel Cabrera went two for three he's now hitting 649 against the Indians this year anyway Logan Morrison spent much of his childhood in Kansas City and he admits it that he was rooting for the Royals during the playoffs and World Series his year was over his offseason home now is in Jupiter Florida but he said he was getting pictures and texts and messages from friends and family members that were tailgating and going to the games for a kid that grew up loving George Brett, and Carlos Beltran, and many others. Nice play there by Brad Miller to track it down. Logan Morrison said, hey, his family, Mariners fans now first, Royals second, and he was pulling for his childhood team. He told me before the game that his grandpa Don is listening. And he's going through a little tough time as he he lost his wife. So he he just wanted to tell me his thoughts were with his grandpa today. Great play. And now Hernandez throws a strike to Alex Rios. He drove in the Royals' first run tonight. 
with a single to center field. No swing. Pitch was way outside. Rios and Infante drove in the runs with two outs in the second inning, and then Mustakas, who just missed a home run, doubled in a run in the third inning. There's Infante waiting his turn. Two and two. He's having a tough time tonight, at least by his standards. Putting hitters away. He's been ahead 0 2 1 2 and several times, like with Rios here. Next thing you know, the count has gone to 3 and 2. He's nibbling, and he shouldn't have to nibble. He's not a nibbler. He's the king. Good pitch. There you go. He's at two seam fastball. Sometimes it gets hit a little bit because it's been straight. He's going away from it. He's not, he's trying to finesse with this change up and use his other pitches. But that two seam fastball does a lot of good. Our Toyota League leaders for tonight. Mariners and the A's. The Royals will see Oakland after this series tied for the most team quality starts. And Felix Hernandez leading the way for Seattle in that category. Although if he gives up another run. The quality start will go down the drain. Infante and before I could even mention it. Had been hitless in his career against Felix Hernandez. And then on the first pitch he saw in the second inning, he singled into left center, driving in Rios. And Omar Infante, the once struggling Omar Infante, now is an eight game hitting streak, which is the most for any Royal. Two balls, one strike. And not just a hit here and there to extend the streak. Hitting 429. Yeah, I like that. Shorten up his swing. He knew the adjustments he had to make, and when he wasn't doing it, he was a little bit surprised because of veteran hitter that he is. You know, you're going to go into funks just because you've been in the game a long time doesn't mean he's going to keep you immune to those, but you make the adjustments sooner so you can come out of them a little sooner, and he's doing it now. You know what I've wondered about him, Hood? Because he is a streaky hitter. As the pitch comes in, watch when this pitch comes in. He he alternates lifting his feet back and forth as a timing mechanism, but it doesn't take much to have the wrong foot up and the wrong foot down when the pitch comes in. I mean that's that's a lot of very unique movement. I mean, you know, hitters have different twitches and triggers, but Boy, I mean, he's got to be just right when that pitch is coming in, right? Right, and it's his heels, which is okay because he's on the balls of his feet. And your heels are okay. It reminds me of a golfer. Lots of golfers do that before they're getting ready to hit their shot. But I mean, as the pitch comes in, I mean, you want to be more flat-footed, at least with your back foot, right? Don't you want to be more? Yeah, you would think, but you know, you're still though on your balls of your feet when you're hitting. So it's really it. Some hitters use their hands to move, but you got to have some kind of movement. And there's a few guys. He's not the only one who does it, who who moves with his feet. But he's just picking up his heels, just very slightly. It's almost like a nervous twitch. Mm -hmm. Cano goes out and makes the play, and Hernandez gets the Royals in order in the top of the fourth.
coming up at Kauffman Stadium, Beers of the K returns. That's a week from Friday. Minnesota will be in town. Join us for this pregame beer garden themed event featuring a wide assortment of unique beer varieties. Live entertainment and each ticket comes with a Royals koozie. Beers of the K, a week from Friday. Get your tickets at royals.com slash special events. And if it's a typical July 3rd day in Kansas City, then the timing of Beers of the K could be perfect. Sounds like a good time to me. And that koozie, for those that don't know what that is, that kind of is like a, a cooler. It kind of puts your, your drink inside of it. You don't pour it inside it. You just set your drink in it. Austin Jackson struck out against Blanton in the first inning. Hello. That'll keep you from diving into the plate. Blanton has struck out four in three innings. He has set down the last seven Mariners. That was a good pitch. It's a little bit outside. Three and two. Backhands and gets Jackson. So eight in a row knocked down by Joe Blanton. Who should be very comfortable here after coming up in the Oakland A's organization. Seattle in the same division. So he's familiar with this mound. And he's pitched well here. He's made Eight starts at Safeco Field. Six of those eight starts have been quality starts. 0 and 1 on Cano. Nice breaking ball for strike one. There was the fastball that didn't quite sink like he wanted to, and Cano, perfect swing. This is the second home run, and Blanton's given up. The other home one was to a right hander. I can't remember who it was. Didn't get his arms extended, and this time a routine fly ball to right. So Cano's home run is the only thing that Seattle has done against Joe Blanton. No other hits, no other base runners. And he's retired the last nine. And up comes Nelson Cruz, our T Mobile game changer, and he was that for the first. 46 games with 18 home runs and also hitting for a high average. I mean, he was on his way to a triple crown, but in the last 22, just one home run and hitting 256. A case of the try two hearts. They're they're physically okay. There's not anybody hitting, playing through any kind of nagging injuries or anything. One of those things that's unfortunate, and the Royals have been through that too. Somebody has to go, and it's a hitting coach usually. But you know, the one thing about this guy that never changes, talking with some of talking with him today and some of his teammates, he shows up with a smile every day. This guy's happy, Nelson Cruz, and that means a lot in baseball. Ooh, tough hop. And Hosmer with his gold glove makes the play. And Joe Blanton has retired the last 10 Mariners. Going back to the Cano home run in the first inning. He knows what to do. Just pitch to that defense. It's amazing. What a pick that was.
child win the opportunity of a lifetime by entering them into our Kids Run the Show contest presented by Skippy. And for the game on July 26, the Astros will be in town, and your child could spend the afternoon assisting with select game day positions. And we'll run through some of those. Gerard Dyson takes ball one. Some of those game day positions as team photographer, a K crew member, a TV broadcaster, an in stadium host, and more. And the deadline to apply is next Wednesday, July 1st. So fill out your application now at royals.com slash kids run the show. So are you out or am I out when the kid becomes the TV broadcaster? Well, me, obviously. You got to run the Not show. Not necessarily. No, 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 Not no. Necessarily. No. You, you set it up you, and you know you, you, you gotta do your thing there and kind of set the tone and tell us where they're from and all that stuff that the play by play guys do. And I can be replaced easier than you. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, I'm as much a kid as anybody else, so it won't be that big a difference. You working with a kid than me right now. <laughs> I'm just a little older kid. Sure would be nice to see Gerard Dyson get on, man. A lot of people have talked about missing Dyson stealing bases. Yeah, it's hard to steal first base, especially when you're playing once, maybe once every two weeks. But he's he hit the ball hard his first time up. Mm -hmm. Rounded sharply to Cano at second base. Yeah. A little bit outside. Good eye. Again, Royals. Taxing that pitch count 78 pitch coming. That's what you want to do against a, a guy who won a Cy Young Award 2010. Crack bat and Smith will make the play in left field. But that pitch count is now at 78 with one down in the fifth inning. It's good at bat by Dyson. He almost got another hit there. Felix Hernandez, the year Zach Grinke won the Cy Young, he was second. The next year in 2010, he won the Cy Young. And then he finished second again last year to Corey Kluber. Curve ball in for a strike. And I mentioned, you know, I say he's still just 29 years old. This is his 11th. Major League season. He was 19 when he first was called up by the Mariners. The Mariners are 11 and 3 in his 14 starts. In the other games, they are 14 games under 500. And that is down. And Escobar. Thought about two. Nelson Cruz has a strong arm. Second hit for Escobar. He's on with one out. He was talking to that ball the whole way. It looked like it was just going to flare out. And again, that's what I like to call a booty knock. And you get off balance, your backside falls out of the box, but you're able to keep your head and your hands right on it. That'll work. And to remind our listeners that the the thoughts and statements of Rex Hudler do not reflect those of the Kansas City <laughs> Royals or Fox Sports Kansas City. <laughs> well, it's when you get off balance sometimes, if you do the other things right by keeping your head and your hands there, you can still get a hit when your backside falls out. Send your comments to Rex at rexhudler.com. <laughs> one, one on Mike Moustakis. One for two with an RBI double, and that RBI double was about a foot and a half away from being his seventh home run. It was the seventh consecutive game where Moustakis has driven in a run. Off 
the end of the bat and another multi hit game for Moustakis. Escobar goes to third. And there are runners at the corners with one out. Some more Moose calls. He just kind of dumped that off the end of his bat. That ball was way outside. Look at that. Moustak is having the plate covered with a two strike approach. Escobar challenged him. Seth Smith took the bait, almost threw it away. And now an RBI spot for Kendrys Morales. Outside, let's go to Joel. Oh, Ryan, I remember earlier in the year Mitch Meyer telling me he wasn't surprised at all about Kendrys this year. That's what he saw when they were winter ball teammates in the Dominican 06 and 07. Nelson Cruz was also on that team. He echoed those sentiments today. How about the middle of the lineup? Two, three, and four hitters on that team. Brian Pena, Kendrys Morales, and Nelson Cruz in the middle, a team that also had Juan Francisco. Mitch Meyer was on that team. Alexei Casilla. Kendry's telling me they scored 10 runs a game almost every single night, but somehow, some way, fell short in the championship. That was a bunch of years ago, but these guys say Kendry's still the same hitter. Two and one against Hernandez. Don't forget to vote for the player of the month at Rally House. Dot com slash Royals and you'll be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. Royals have seven hits in four and a third innings. The most they've ever had against Hernandez is eight. Nelson Cruz creeping up on Kendry's Morales. For the All Star game, a designated hitter. Don't let them take our guys, folks. Come on, keep the voting up. Let's go. Let's just keep the pressure on the rest of the league. Darn it. So Hernandez rolls into a, gets Morales to roll into an inning inning double play. Royals lead by two. night in baseball but on one night they all happen in one place don't miss the 86 all-star game coverage begins at 6 o'clock central Tuesday July 14th on Fox inside to Kyle Seeger Seeger fouled a ball off of his knee 
when he batted in the second inning and then had a kind of a half hearted swing and you can understand why and Blanton got him with a good change up. Now a good curveball down and in one ball one strike. That's 11 in a row retired by Joe Blanton. Well, I've been showing you the all star leaders at each position. How about the all star coaching staff? Ned Yost will bring his entire staff, and he's also going to bring former Royal A.J. Hinch, who's leading the surprising Houston Astros, and the Mariners manager, Lloyd McClendon. Who is from Cincinnati, right? Is that that's one of the connections? I think so. I, I think that's the first organization that Lloyd played for. If I'm not mistaken. One and one on Trumbo. He flied to the warning track in left field in the second inning. First got to the big leagues in 87, like you said, HUD, with the Cincinnati Reds. He is from Indiana. And when Ned announced his coaching staff, he uh, made the connection with McClendon and Cincinnati, where the All Star game is going to be. And he thought that, you know, what A.J. Hinch was doing with the surprising Houston Astros felt like. Their manager should be represented on the all star team. Trumbo strikes out, and that is five for Joe Blanton. Joe Blanton wants to stay in Ned Yost's rotation. After that solo home run to Cano, there hadn't been much else. Matter of fact, that's the only hit. What's that now? 10, 11 straight? 12. 12 straight. Wow. Five punch outs. Good stuff. Keeping the ball down, and I think that one pitch to Cano woke him up a little bit. And of course, the two runs that the Royals answered with the very next inning, like they normally do, helped him a lot. He said, "All right, this is my chance. I'm going to stay in the rotation. I got to have another good outing." And he's doing it. That good curveball he's using. Now he hasn't used that pitch as much as his slider, but but it's working tonight for him. That was a big pitch for him when he came up with the Oakland A's, his curveball and his changeup. His change is good, looks good tonight too. First round pick of the Oakland A's in 2002 out of the University of Kentucky, Joe Blanton. Known for his excellent control in his best years. One season he threw 230 innings. And only had 40 walks. Horse. And his foul by a couple of feet. And of course, now he is trimmed up, leaned up, strong, and he's in the best shape of his life, told me. And Yost was talking to the Seattle media before the game tonight, and they were asking about Joe Blanton and why he's pitched so well. And Ned said, you know, maybe just getting away from the game for a year and a half, clearing his mind. Realizing how much he loved it because Joe has said it just wasn't fun for him the way it ended mm. with the Angels. But he's having a lot of fun tonight. Another three up, three down inning. He has struck out six in five innings. And the last 13 Mariners have failed to reach. Go, Joe, go.
So far so good. The Royals have a 3 1 lead. And three runs is like a mountain of runs against Felix Hernandez and Joe Blanton has outpitched Felix Hernandez giving up just one hit in five innings. Eric Hosmer very high in the air to left center field. And he flies out to Seth Smith for a second time tonight. Hosmer is 0 for 3. Our Sonic Slam inning contestant tonight is Kent Schneider from Topeka. And if the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Kent wins $2,200. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, Kent wins 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. Salvador Perez was the first Royal to reach in the second inning with a one out double and scored on a Rios base hit. And then Hernandez came back to strike him out in the third. I think Sal saw that big hole on the right side and tried to poke it through, but hit it out to Cano. Two down. MLB.TV Premium is the number one live streaming sports service. You can watch every out of market regular season game live or on demand in HD with highlights, live look ins, and pitch tracking every night on every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Pitch number 92 is outside from Hernandez to Alex Gordon. Alex lost a 10 game hitting streak during the Boston series, but he has reached base in 14 consecutive games. I mentioned the five walks during the homestand. The walks lock you in, it means you're seeing pitches, telling that pitcher, Look, I'm not going to swing at your stuff until you give me my pitch. It's a pretty simple philosophy, but it's hard when you're trying to be aggressive and, and get a hit. Down and out of the strike zone. That's the third baseman Seeger throwing out Alex. Royals down quickly in the sixth inning. One KC.
and the Seattle Mariners on an absolutely beautiful night in Seattle Washington. You used to come here three times a year with the Angels. It was awesome. Did it, it doesn't get old does Loved it? Loved it. Never. Playing was different because it was in across the building when they had that cement uh, structure that wasn't really pretty in there. It was smelt Which is known as the Kingdom. Ah, smelt a little stuffy. They got this new ballpark largely because of the Angels. That 95 one game playoff that they beat us in to go to the postseason stimulated Seattle and got this building right in here. So you're taking some credit. Absolutely. Really? Believe it. Okay. Always have. Is Ever there, since I came, we come through here. Kind of a plaque or anything with your name on it or a statue. Not personally, I'm saying the Angels. I was a part of the Angels okay. in '95, and they were talking about moving to Seattle to to play in that Tropicana Dome after that season. Saint Petersburg. What did I say? They already lived in. they already in Seattle. Yeah. Well, you know the, the Saint Pete Ballpark. They were going to vacate it. Lou Pinella was their manager. Lou want, wanted some pitching. And they they beat the Yankees and they lost to Cleveland, but they went far enough to where it stimulated the crowd here in Seattle and they got this the stadium built. So they were at the end of their rope about 95. Now, do the are the fans aware that you're in the house tonight? The ones Rhino. that enjoy coming here every night. I know. I am not trying to make it sound like it's me. It was a team I played on. I played second base for him. We were going to beat them. We were ready to go into the postseason, and Randy Johnson was there. And he, he, he hurt us. Our sprint cuts of the game. There have not been very many good ones against Joe Blanton tonight. Certainly does have it going ever since Cano woke him up with that solo shot. It's the only hit he's given. Look where he is on the edges, down, changing speeds, locating, doing exactly like Dave Island wants him to do. So Joe Blanton as a starter and we're only talking two starts but he's gone ten in the third innings and he has given up two earned runs over the inside good pitch to Zanino Blanton has set down the last 14 Mariners. No balls and two strikes on Zanino. He took a fastball right down the middle on a 3 2 pitch from Blanton in the third inning. Sal wants a breaking ball down and away. That's where it is. One and two. Breaking ball. Seven strikeouts for Blanton. And now 15 in a row down. So he's using that high part of the strike zone as well, and it worked again. Seven strikeouts for Joe Blanton. And it we shouldn't be surprised. Because he's got really good stuff. He's changing speeds, but that guy there is tickled pink and he's not showing it. He is excited deep down inside. He's saying, Wow, that's my guy. Look at him. He's going in, he's going deep into this game, deeper than we expected. Oh, everything seems to be working. Don't you think Ryan that maybe Cano woke him up a little bit. Yeah and not just Cano but in the second inning Trumbo fly to the warning track in left field Smith fly to the warning track in right field. It was a noisy first two innings. But that's really the only shots that the Mariners have had against Blanton. He's. They've had. At least on my scorecard they haven't had any good swings or hit the ball hard. Since Smith's out in the second. Two and two on Logan Morrison. Yeah, and all those, some of those balls, <laughs> we had to hold our breath. They could have went out with a different game. It 
Salvador Perez wants a change up. And a change up back to Blanton. And like a hockey goalie, makes a glove save. 16 up and 16 down for the Mariners since Cano's home run in the first inning. Wow. Call the cops. He made his own defensive play. AT&T U-verse high-speed internet. The U-verse revolves around you. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. By your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit your MidwestFordDealers.com. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Ah. Royals lead 3-1. And if we weren't here, I wouldn't mind being there. Be nice to be a passenger and be a friend of that person, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to afford that boat and, and, and the cost probably to park it. No, thank you. One and two on Rios. He drove in the Royals' first run in the second inning against Hernandez with a single to center. Rios, Infante, and Mustakis have driven in the runs. Blasted into the left field corner. It is foul into the Kings court. And that is pitch number 100 for Hernandez. Had to feel good for Rios. Well on paper some would look at this and say it was a mismatch. Both have gone six innings. Joe Blanton has given up one hit one run. He's retired the last 16. Hernandez has settled in since giving up his third run in the third. Change up. That is his fifth strikeout. One away in the seventh inning. Good spot. Got him to pull his head off just a tad. One hundred and two pitches, two long innings. The second, nineteen pitches. The third, twenty-four pitches. He's had very little trouble since the third inning. Omar Infante, a fellow Venezuelan, had been 0 for 11 against. 
Felix Hernandez but on the first pitch he saw from Felix tonight he singled to left center and drove in Rios. Joe Bimel is ready to go in the Mariners bullpen. Two down. Hundred and fourteen pitches is the most he's thrown, and that was way back in April, 29th, at Texas. Went six and two thirds. It got got the win to make him four and zero. Oh. For Felix. Ron Dyson has a two out single. That's the eighth hit of the game for the Royals, tying the most they've ever had against Felix Hernandez. And now all eyes will be on Gerard Dyson. So he'll try and get into scoring position for Alcides Escobar, who has a two hit game and already has a good lead. Look at him hold it. Yeah, he'll do that. He'll hold long to try to hit, keep the base runner from getting a good jump. He's got a slide step. And he has an average pickoff move to first. But he'll hold it. That's a good weapon. And then now watch him. Sometimes he'll just go right home quickly. Talked about Escobar, you know, and he's so good at keeping his hands back. This is this is the booty knock right here from last time up. Okay, watch it. See the backside fall out. Backside goes, but the hand and eye coordination is right on it. He makes contact. See where his head is. Perfect spot. Dropped it down the right field line. Base hit. Off balance. Well, Dyson hasn't taken off yet, but. Hernandez is well aware of him and that's led to him falling behind Escobar 2 and 0 Escobar singled and scored the Royals third run in the third Dyson a little bigger lead and now it's three balls and no strikes Moustakis is on deck and we showed you the lefty Bimel ready to go in the Mariners bullpen. Three and one. Over Felix Hernandez's career, 75% of base dealers have been successful against him. Dyson runs. And into second base. Stumbled a little bit out of the blocks. But HUD just told you 75% of runners have been successful against Hernandez, so he's slow to the plate. It's well, a little skid on the way out. It, it, and sometimes that'll be the difference, but you could see where that throw was. He way outran the ball. Nice to see him seven out of eight this year. Big lead. He'll take third, too, if you let him. And he goes. And Escobar grounds it into center field. So the Royals come through again. They've scored three of their four runs with two outs. Escobar has a three hit game. And nine hits is the most hits ever for the Royals against Felix Hernandez. And Lloyd McClendon has to go to his bullpen. Another hit off balance by Escobar. Just trying to find the hole. So four earned runs is the most the Royals have ever had against Felix Hernandez. So the king 
and his court can sit down. <laughs> Chevy call to the bullpen. Total, but this gets him out and another hit off balance. You think Phoenix didn't know the uh, the last time from that? Look at that backside out off balance. He did his job. Knees are bent, but look at his eyes. They are right on that, and he found the hole right up the middle. Second hit out of his three up the middle. Very nice, Dyson. Applying some pressure. If you're going to give it to him, he'll take it. And there's a little Royals baseball. It sat King Felix down in that end. Joe Bimel makes one pitch. And he gets the final out of the top of the seventh inning. Stretch time in Seattle. The Royals beginning a long road trip, lead 4-1. Coming to Seattle beginning with Felix Hernandez. He is out. Joe Blanton is still in tomorrow. It's Jeremy Guthrie against former Royal minor leaguer Mike Montgomery. Montgomery has a 2.73 ERA. 
And then Roenis Elias will pitch for Seattle on Wednesday as Danny Duffy comes back from the disabled list. But the story tonight is Joe Blanton. He's retired the last 16 Mariners. Ned Yost sends him back out there for the seventh inning. And that snaps the string right there. Austin Jackson, that snaps two strings. He had been 0 for his last 12. And the Mariners have their first runner since two outs in the bottom of the first inning. And Ned's seen enough. He thought he would give Joe Blanton an opportunity to stretch that season high outing. But regardless, one heck of a job. Love being spread all around there. Great job by Joe. Thank you, sir. You might have just earned yourself another start. Tough to take him out. Better believe it. Kelvin Her. He departs with a three run lead. Standing next to Chris Young and Danny Duffy, who will return on Wednesday here in Seattle. And hands the ball off to Kelvin Herrera, who had two scoreless outings during the homestand one game against Milwaukee, and then a scoreless inning on Saturday against Boston. That 194 opponents' average is good. 2.08 is not too shabby either. Nobody out. He inherits a runner at second base. It's Joe Blanton's. Fouled back by Cano. He homered to straightaway center field in the first inning. And then flied out to right in the fourth. Cano. That was just the third home run for Robinson Cano. Well, that's a good sign. It'll be Dustin Ackley, a 190 hitter, who's had a brutal start to his season instead of Nelson Cruz if Cano gets on. If Cano does get on, that means the tying run would come to the plate. One ball and two strikes. So something's wrong with Nelson Cruz. Herrera got Cano to chase the changeup. Cano guessing fastball. That's what you got to look for when you face Herrera. Two strikes, you try to adjust to that changeup, but 
That's his pitch, the fastball. Now we get a runner to third. Wild pitch. Charge to Herrera. Second wild pitch on the season. Change up. Stayed with it back to back. Thought he could get that same swing out of Cano. And he's going to go to it again. This time Herrera shakes it off. He wants to go to the fastball. Not quite where. Perez wanted it, but when you're throwing 101, you don't necessarily have to hit your spot. No, and if it's elevated, that's all you can do to it. Foul it off. No way you can get on top of that. Royals bullpen has the best ERA in the American League. Right by him at 100 miles an hour. It's a little cheddar cheese right there, right now. This pitch was blown by him. That's why he wants to throw it. Stay with it. Especially when it's at the top of the zone like that. So Dustin Ackley hits for Nelson Cruz, who is 0 for 2 against Blanton. And we were telling you earlier about the bad start that Mike Zanino has had for Seattle, their catcher. He has the worst batting average among Major League players. Dustin Ackley has the ninth worst average. <laughs> Dustin Ackley among players with at least 150 plate appearances. He has one multi hit game all year, which is the fewest in baseball. Yeah, not good. The Mariners, you start asking, well, why are they struggling so badly on offense? And you start pointing to guys that Lloyd McClendon was depending on Mike Zanino, Dustin Ackley. Mark Trumbo has struggled since coming over from Arizona. Robinson Cano only has three home runs. Got to challenge him right here. And the last thing you want to do is walk a 190 pinch hitter and bring the tying run to the plate. And give the Mariners a chance. Actually, one for five as a pinch hitter with one RBI. And he has a chance here. All he has to do is make some contact here with one out. The infield back. He could pick up the run there. Do it again. That swing. Seen better swings on a gate. <laughs> Stay with it. A little better. A little better. But any better than the gate? Just a tad. And you can see he didn't quite fall out, and that right, that right foot of his didn't swing off as bad as the first one did. Back from three and one and finishes off the last two hitters with fastballs at 100. So that keeps the potential tying run on deck with another dangerous hitter coming up. It's a little tardy. Well, and you know, you talk about hitting off of a stiff front side, right? He, he had a lot of bend in his knee as he's swinging there. It's hard to generate any power, right? Yeah, I told you his right leg is swinging towards the first base dugout, and, and you you can't hit when you're you don't have your hips. So you're right. He's uh, needs some work. Just found out that Nelson Cruz 
left the game because of a tight right hamstring. That's why Ackley batted for him. 98 for a strike to Kyle Seeger. He has 11 home runs against Blanton tonight. He struck out and grounded out to second base. Salvi, excellent job. Just keep that thing in front of you, keep it in, and let Herrera do his magic. Keep that fastball right where it is, up and away on guys. Let them try to pull it out of the park. Good luck to you. Now the changeup, that can be hit. Do it there. But as long as he keeps that changeup down and away and doesn't elevate it, that speeds the hitter's bat up, especially after looking at 100. But what are the chances of Seeger hitting a home run off of Herrera's fastball versus a hanging changeup? I'm thinking the hanging changeup is a little easier for him to get his bat out there and hit one. See that one there? If it's up and away, there's no way unless you're thinking the opposite field and stay out, really stay on top with your top end. I don't think you can get on top and pull it. It's just almost impossible. I'm See wondering with his fastball tonight, if he's just not here, here, hit this, because chances are he's just going to drive in one run, but if he hangs a changeup, that's that could be two runs. Exactly. So stay with it. Two strikes here. Look at Salvi. Big target in the middle. That'll work. We got a man there. Inning over. So Seattle had a runner at third with nobody out. Kelvin Herrera shows why the Royals bullpen is what it is. And the Mariners show why their offense is what it is. Get it to the pin to win. Takes us around the league. Detroit over Cleveland. Minnesota blasts Chicago. Toronto beats Tampa. And LA and Houston in the middle of their game. Our Mazda game break takes us to Minnesota. Who said Target Field is not a home run hitter's park? Homers from Maurer, Nunez, Vargas, and this one off the bat of Dozier. All twins in this one. The White Sox guys, boy, they're a mess. John Danks, five and a third, nine runs, only five of them were earned and those White Sox now drop to 30 and 39 on the year. Yikes. It's not what they had in mind when they started signing guys during the offseason trading for guys. It was a good looking team on paper but many times there's a big difference between on paper and on the field. So many times you see that. Red Sox, same problem they got. That 
that memo never seems to make its way to the national prognosticators, or at least many of them, mm -hmm. who I think just tend to see whatever the newest moves are without maybe taking a step forward and saying, okay, this team, say the Royals, have guys that are more mature and starting to hit their prime. They just look at whatever the big moves are and don't think about Kendris Morales. Those are the small things in baseball and the fact that the Royals, they won together most of the guys down in the minors and they all have that chemistry working together. They almost won last year and now there's unfinished business. So maybe those national guys didn't realize about the team chemistry that's going on with these teams. There's more to baseball than names and stats. And, and just projecting growth to go with that chemistry. Exactly. So there's That's a comfort saying. level, and there's the growth of these players. We all knew with Kendris Morales, well, we're not saying we predicted these stats, but we also knew that he didn't even start anything until June last year. He didn't have a spring training. This wasn't secret information. And you look at what some of these teams that were predicted to win their divisions. San Diego. Some people had the White Sox, the Mariners. And maybe these teams will make comebacks, but it hasn't happened yet. Takes time. The, the the quick fix solution rarely works. 0 and 2 on Hosmer. By, I'm, I'm sorry, Ryan. I was going to tell the fans. 88 to 91 is his sinking fastball, big slider. He got the final out of the seventh inning on one pitch, and now staying on for the top of the eighth inning. Veteran Joe Bimel. And if he is shooting for the creepiest player in the major leagues this year, he's got my vote. <laughs> well, he's got that chin shaved off. The hair, anyway. Nice play. Double play. So Bimel gets two outs with one pitch and now faces Salvador Perez who saluted Felix Hernandez before delivering our Jeep drive of the game which got the Royals going in the second inning. And what he said was hey homie how you doing give me a cookie and he and he got it all started. And they fed off of that like they've been doing most of the year whenever the opponents score first or they get ahead of them they say all right we got something for you we have a counterattack. And then they go to working on each other, feed off each other. Hold foul, one and one. Shit. You said that, how you doing, homie? Salute. That was to Felix Hernandez, who's from Venezuela. So is Alcides Escobar, who had three hits, a run score, and an RBI off of Hernandez. And so is Omar Infante, who drove in a run. So the homies had some success. Now, you asked early in the game, HUD, what was up with Salvador Perez's bat? Yeah. And now I'm going to ask you, what is up with Salvador Perez's bat? <laughs> what is that? Somebody's got some a, a paintbrush going. I don't know. Some little to, I'll, pine I'll, tar strips around his bat? I'll get to the bottom okay. of it. Two and two on Sal. Still two and two. Bimel's been around for a long time. Good left hand reliever, so he always has teams interested in him. He's been a professional since 1998. Coming up first with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Busted bat, and Jackson makes the play in center field. 
to the bottom of the eighth. Wade Davis is coming on. Royals lead 4-1. The City are offering a unique way for fans across the Midwest to enjoy a game at Kauffman Stadium. It's the Forever Royal Fan Express. Fans in designated markets will have the opportunity to win a trip to Kauffman Stadium. And the next stop is Des Moines on the 4th of July. Royals.com slash Fan Express for more information. Here's Wade Davis coming on in the bottom of the eighth inning with a three run lead. And that is so small you can hardly see it. 0, 0.30. Wade Davis has appeared in 30 games and has given up one run in 30 innings. One. Yep. I don't know what Dylan Batanzas has done, but those two guys are the best relievers, in my opinion, in the American League. We haven't seen everybody in the National League. And a strike to Mark Trumbo. Trumbo was 0 for 2 against Blanton. Here's a little historical perspective on Wade Davis the last two years. Since 1914. He has the lowest ERA for a reliever over a two year span. Since the beginning of last year, his ERA is 0 0.80. 1914? Since 1914. Behind him, Dennis Eckersley in 89 and 90 had a 1.03. And then third on the list is Batansis. He's been 1.08 the last two years. Still 0 and 2. It's pretty impressive. I, I, you got to go all the way back like that. We're seeing one of the greatest, and I love it. There's Batanzas, Davis. There's the numbers in relief. Davis big overhand curve to go along with his cut fastball and regular heater up to 97 really good with his accuracy he has not allowed a home run in 112 consecutive innings that goes back to September of 2013 and that is by far 
the longest active streak in the major leagues. That is just sick. Trumbo was like, man, come on. Please tell me that was a strike. That, I mean, it's amazing he's able to keep the ball as hard a thrower as he is. And, and the way hitters like that fastball, it tells you how good he is at putting it where he wants it. There's a cutter. Beauty. And you bet he's going to be there. The all star game. You know when Zach Grinke won the Cy Young in 2009. He didn't have all of the classic. Numbers the traditional. Numbers. And some will say that that was the beginning of. You know the, the Sabre metrics having an impact. And end of the year awards. I mean like maybe the win win loss yeah, win loss ERA. I mean there, there were just more categories that were considered that. You know the advanced metrics showing the complete domination the you know the comprehensive domination of a pitcher. And I wonder if next on the list because of that. The balls hit well to left center field. And Alex runs it down. Alex Gordon with a gold glove like play. He made that look easy, but he ran a long way to retire Seth Smith. Just to finish the thought, Hut, I wonder with those advanced metrics if Cy Young's won't just be starters or relievers. I mean, I, I'm still surprised, and maybe 10 years from now it won't be the case, that what Wade Davis did last year doesn't end up with some. Cy Young consideration or reliever of the year consideration. I'm sure Holland got the Mariano Rivera award right. last year, right. which was he was stellar too. I mean, his numbers were good, but Davis's were better. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, it's a luxury for Ned. When Holland was out this year, Davis was able to pick up some saves for him. Eight saves, as a matter of fact, he has this year. But you're right. I mean, why not give it to a reliever? It's made a big difference in it on a team as, as big as Waiter's done. Hmm? Oh, one and two. And I understand what the voters are thinking. Well, you know, for a closer, the game's on the line. For an eighth inning guy, the game's on the line and yet there's somebody behind him. But. Sometimes. The hardest inning or the toughest hitters come up in the eighth inning or the seventh inning. Strike three called and that's just another scoreless inning. For Wade Davis so make it 31 innings this year. And he's given up one run. Waiter. A couple of yellow hammers and a side of cheese. And I'll take the check please.
Carpenter and the Cardinals take on Giancarlo Stanton and the Marlins in a game you can only see on Fox Sports 1. Coverage begins at 6 p.m. It's also streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Fernando Rodney will come on with three blown saves. It's not been a typical dominating season for Fernando Rodney and an ERA over six. Here, Dave Holtzman was talking about some of the advanced metrics during our commercial break. And I mentioned that, uh, you know, Zach Grinke kind of set the stage for other categories to be considered in giving a postseason award to a pitcher. And that led to Felix Hernandez winning the Cy Young after Zach. Felix Hernandez won it in 2010 with 13 wins. Now, who was ever going to win the Cy Young with 13 wins? Never. And I think, was that the year, Holtzy, that Sabathia had 17, 18, 19 wins or something and never was really in consideration because they're like, okay, well, his ERA was high and he got a ton of run support. So they're looking at more categories. And, and one of the advanced metrics is ERA plus. By the way, Holtzy looked it up. Sabathia had 21 wins in 2010. Now, for I'm the two of us when we were kids growing up, right? That, that's your the winner. The 21 win guy always won the Cy Young <laughs> over the 13 win guy. But they're looking at other categories, which is great. So one of the advanced metrics is ERA plus. And what they factor in is the pitcher's ERA, the league's ERA. So how's that pitcher doing in relation to the rest of the league because sometimes the league ERA is up, sometimes it's down, whatever. And they also factor in the different ballparks because, you know, if you, if a, a Baltimore Orioles pitcher is always going to have a worse ERA than a Seattle Mariners pitcher because it's easier to hit in Baltimore than it is here. Okay? So there's some background for you. Now, getting to my point about Wade Davis being considered for a Cy Young. When Felix Hernandez won the Cy Young in 2010, his ERA plus was 179. And I'm not going to explain to you what that means other than if you're above 100, you're considered above average. So he was 179. Okay, Wade Davis's ERA plus last year was 396. Ooh, his ERA plus this year is 1,329. So it's numbers like that that some of the old school voters, baseball writers, and I'll, I'll put myself in that category. I don't get to vote, but there are more numbers now that are worth looking at that don't take three innings to explain. But it's numbers like that that just show you how good Wade Davis is. I like it. Vote him in. I'm in. I, I totally agree with you, but I, I think it's better. I think it's good that they're factoring in all that. Well, because it, it really makes a difference on the numbers. Size of the ballpark. How many runs your team scores for you? Like King Felix has, had only gotten, you know, no more than four runs of support this year, yet he's got 10 wins. And usually when you see that, you'll see a guy with an even 500 record. Mm -hmm. Five and five because the other team scores more. But he's he's been able to win those close games. And now the argument is made he shouldn't be punished for that. Alex, after a long battle with Rodney, is on with a leadoff walk. Great plate appearance. <laughs> Seattle Mariners last year. And I'm not saying they had the best bullpen in the league because those of us who watched the Royals last year would argue that Smith makes a play on Rios. But Seattle did have the lowest bullpen ERA in the American League last season. And now they are 10th in bullpen ERA. So as we've been talking tonight about some of the things, some of the facets of Seattle's overall picture that has let them down one of them is the bullpen that's why they're 
six and on their way to seven games below 500. Pulled foul by Infante. Holtz, look this one up for me. With uh, the 21 wins, sorry, Holtz, just started into a little tray of peanuts here. Well, it's about that time of night. <laughs> Now he's ready to go. What was uh, CC Sabathia's ERA plus in 2010 and his run support compared to Felix Hernandez? Because that 10 or 15 years ago, that would have been almost scandalous if a 13 game winner won the Cy Young Award when there was a 21 game winner out there. Alex is gunned down. Mike Zanino thought it was the final out of the inning. And was it? Yes, it was a strikeout. Strikeout, throw him out, double play. And now the rest of the Mariners realize the inning's over. Three outs to go, and the Royals looking for game one. And tonight's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. Ryan Lefevre, Rex Hudler, Joel Goldberg at Safeco Field in Seattle. Where the Royals have not had a lot of success over the past few years, but Greg Holland is. Three outs away from the Royals beating Felix Hernandez and taking game one. Holland 13 out of 14 and save opportunities. And for a strike to Mike Zanino, who struck out twice against Joe Blanton. Low to mid 90s, slider, occasional split finger. Nice to see Ned on games that the Royals have had leads get back to his Herrera, Davis, Holland, HDH. He's been able to get back to that formula now, and hopefully they'll be able to stay that consistent the rest of the way because that's that's their roles. Holland, <laughs> he was taking his out number one strikeout walk off the mound, but. Marvin Hudson said it was a little bit outside. It'll be Zanino, Morrison, and Jackson in the bottom of the ninth. And strike three over the inside. So he didn't get the call before. That's three strikeouts for Zanino, but Marvin Hudson gives Holland the call this time. Now he didn't hit the target, but. Look at the movement. 
Still pretty close. If you don't hack, he'll send you back. Zanino, you got to go. That was wicked, that two-seamer there. Salvi made that look good, too, didn't he? And now Logan Morrison. Just to finish the thought from the last half inning, Dave Holtzman looked it up. CC Sabathia in 2010, 21 wins, but a six-plus run support average. Felix Hernandez, 13 wins. He had run support on average of three. So CC Sabathia was getting three more runs per game. That's why. In the voters' minds, he had eight more wins, or part of the reason why he had eight more wins than Felix Hernandez. And now we'll put a cork in it. It's okay. Holtz, he can get back to his peanuts. One and two on Morrison. The let's go Royals chance never get old, especially on the road. All the way up here in the Pacific Northwest. Royals fans are everywhere now. And you like that. Players love it. Joe Blanton went six innings. He gave up a home run to the third batter he faced. He went six innings. He gave up one run, two hits. He struck out seven. And at one point, set down 16 in a row. And then Herrera and Davis have done their thing. Three and two as Holland tries to close it out. And taking absolutely nothing away from what Royals pitching has accomplished tonight. We're seeing the struggles of. The Seattle offense second fewest runs in the American League and the fewest runs scored at home this year in the American League. A little bit outside Morrison flings his bat and that's about that in the Cano home run is about all the Mariners fans have had to cheer for tonight. Yeah all of a sudden is it. Big roar. There's some 95. It's good to see Holland hitting that mark. So a big, big out right here. So Austin Jackson gets on. Robinson Cano is on deck, and he would represent the tying run. Royals want to keep that tying run on deck. Seattle has two hits. Cano homered in the first, and then Jackson doubled in the seventh. No hits in between. And no hits since then. And now it's 0 and 2 on Jackson. Pinpoint control. HDH. Herrera, Davis, and Holland. Man, are they they are hitting it. And Salvi, he's making them look even better. He ought to be a professional framer. The way he frames those pitches on the corners. Oh. Two down. Oh. Perfect spot. Holland looks good. Mm. And I'll tell you what. Great production tonight offensively. They attacked. They got on the board early. They didn't score first. And now Cano could hit one to Tacoma. And it would still be a one run Royals lead. Morrison runs. The Royals will allow him to do so. No stolen base.
Bono gets time at the last moment. The Seattle Mariners have scored three runs or fewer 42 times this year. That's the most in the major leagues. They have played 70 games and 42 of those 70 they have scored three or fewer. Rios coming up in right field and game one goes to the Royals. The Royals give up two hits in nine innings and no runs after the first. So a good start to a nine game road trip. The Royals win 4 1 and the Seattle Mariners continue to struggle. They have now lost 15 of their last 23 games. And Jason Vargas the former Mariner is one of the first out of the dugout. The Royals with the most earned runs and hits they've ever had against Felix Hernandez. And Joe Blanton out pitches Felix Hernandez in game one here in Seattle. Sometimes you just never know what's going to happen. But when you see a matchup like that, you're thinking, really? Can Blanton shut him down? Man, he looked fantastic. He was great. And they did it all without Lorenzo Cain offensively. A bullpen. Ooh, solid. Pin to win. Cano home run. Homered in the first inning. Then it was this double that the frenzy hitting started happening. Got him going. We talked about Salvi, how he leads off innings. He could easily lead off for the Royals. This guy gets things started. Scores. Rios and Fonte, they helped out. Scored a few more, four to one. And he is standing by with Joel. All right, guys, thank you very much. A lot of Royals fans down here. Salvador Perez is congratulating all of his guys coming out of the bullpen. And Rex was just saying, you could be a leadoff man. Rex saying you could be a leadoff man. You got things going with that double tonight. Talk about facing your buddy Felix Hernandez. He's a really good guy, man. Tremendous pitcher, you know. He he likes to throw a lot of off pitch. So you're looking for something out over the play. He throw me in three, two, five in the middle, and he double. How much fun is that when you can go up against a guy? Hold on, here we go. Thank you, thank you. The Salvi chant has broken out as Royals fans have taken over Safeco Field. Let's talk about Felix, though. When you go up against one of your friends like that, same for Omar, same for Alcides, fellow countrymen, do you enjoy that? Yeah, I enjoy 100%. You know, and more when I get a base on him because he's one of the best pitchers in the league. You know, tremendous personality he has, good friend. But, you know, in the, in the field, we, we just want to win. I'll ask you about Joe Blanton in a, in a minute, but before we do that, how about all these fans here? That's unbelievable. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the support. Thank you, fan. They love it. Okay, Joe Blanton goes out there, gives up one hit, and then retires 16 in a row. What made him so good? Aggressive. He pined the ball side to the play. He used all his speech. And the guy says a lot, so he's doing a pretty good job tonight. There it is, the Let's Go Royals chant. Many, many miles from home in Kansas City. This is the leading vote getter in the All Star game. Salvi, go enjoy it with your teammates. Thank you, thank you, fan. Thank you for the support. No Gatorade bucket. No, good. That's my job, Uncle. It's my job, he says. Nobody's taking it. Salvador Perez walks off to a huge ovation here in Seattle. We'll break it all down coming up on Boulevard Royals Live. Analysis, reaction, and much more. Ryan? All right, Joel. Man. It doesn't matter how far away we are from Kansas City. If they play somewhere, the fans will come and they enjoyed a 4-1 Royals victory. We'll be right back.